All right. Presumably, I will add better narration later. Here's the square. I do other editing. Anyway, the purpose of this video is to show off these router jigs. Uh, router jigs that I made. Uh, here's one. This is for the front side of these things that I'm going to cut, these monitor mounts. This one's for the back side. This board down here, uh, so the way this works is you have the, the panel, the router jig, the workpiece, the thing to be routed, and then this piece to be routed has these holes pre-drilled in it that line up with the small holes in these. We'll go through the panel, through the workpiece, and into these, into this board. Hello, Wolfie. It has T-nuts in the back side of it. So, I'll have a thing that looks like, kind of like this. This is an 18-incher. I'm about to cut the 24-inchers. Uh, this one I kind of messed up a little bit. Um, it's supposed to be three, three, three-inch slots. There's the other 18-incher that turned out correctly. Now, how is this a monitor mount? That's a subject for another, another video or blog post. All right, so what we're going to do here, ugly side should be the back, let's say. This is the ugly side. And this is the back template. So you put this through here, put this through these holes. Hopefully I drilled the holes in the right places. So far, so good. Get these all the way through. You may notice this template doesn't cover the whole workpiece. That's right, because my 3D printer can't print something that large. It can print things up to about 15 inches, so I make these 12 inch ones, and to make an 18 or 24 inch uh, monitor mount, and then do it in multiple sections. <laughs> okay, next trick is to get this lined up with this hole. There we go. This one lined up with its hole. There we go. Ta-da. All right. So. Actually, there is a little bit of, maybe, should be a little bit of wiggle room because the holes that I drilled in the work piece are a little bit larger than they necessarily needed to be. So I'm going to try to get this centered on this line. these um, THL 1001 holes, which means holes that are counter countersunk for number 632 flatheads. You can see the, the lines that I drew along this in order to place the holes. So if I center those, then it should be in the right spot. Now there's a cat. Next thing we need to do is to... Hello, Wolfie. Oh, aren't you a lovely creature? Yes. Uh, love, love. Very love. I love you too, Wolfie. Wolfie, I'm going to do some routing. Yeah. I was going to use the router. The wood router, not the packet router. Do you need cat food? All right, I think I need to go feed the cat. Let's take a pause here. Hey, Wolfie. Meow. Okay, now we're gonna feed the cat. Wolfie, do you need cat food? Mabel, do you need cat food? Wow, so many kitties who need kitty food. Oh, there's Alvin. Everybody's here looking for their cat food. All right. Well, cat food. We'll see. Get your head out of the way. Cat food. It's tricky to do one handed. <laughs> Elvin needs his cat food. 
There he is. There you go, Alvin. Have some cat food. You just want to eat wolfies. All right. Uh, there's George's dishes. Um, yeah. All right, back to, <coughs> excuse me, back to routing. So this is all screwed down in the correct place, I think. And so we're going to use a shallow setting for the counter bores, and then we're going to use a deeper setting for the go all the way through holes, although we won't actually go all the way through because on the other side, they're going to be counter bored. And if you don't go all the way through, then you don't have the uh, tear out problem. I'm going to use this uh, bone holder that's kind of inspired by one that this woodworker guy on YouTube uses, Matias, I think his name is. His is round. Mine is not quite as advanced. I don't know how to make round things. I only know how to make grid beam. All right, let's see how this goes. So right now I'm on the deep setting, so I'll just leave it at the deep setting, and here goes nothing. <laughs> Three-eighths of an inch less deep, which should put us at about a quarter inch, maybe a little less than a quarter, which is more deep than these counter boards need to be. I think an eighth would be enough, but using three-quarter inch plywood, I like to make things a little deeper than they have to be. That way you can use longer bolts and uh, the threads with the um, weld nuts have more 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 space where they can overlap if, if you... Know what I mean? Um, here goes. Yeah.
so you may have noticed that I did a little wiggling when I was doing these holes. The reason for that is that I don't, I'm not sure my bushing is completely centered. So if you want to get the hole routed out um, without it being lopsided, then you got to rotate the router. Um, I'm not sure that it's not centered either. I don't really see much noticeable difference. Not enough to know if it's real. The other thing is I made a mistake just now when I was routing this pocket. Uh, I didn't, I didn't de-plunge the router before I pulled it out and I nicked the side. So my template got a little nick out of it there, which is not great, but we'll see how much it matters. I can always patch that up with uh, hot glue or something like that. So that said, time to move over Do the next section. So the way I do that is I just move the work piece over because it's only, well, let's say I only have, I actually have four, but I think I can get away with two counter, counter two T-nuts. So there's only actually two places. There's actually four. But even if there were only two, it would be fine because I can just move the work piece. And this board is, of course, bolted to the table so that it doesn't move around. All right. Next, next two holes, which are seven and a half and sixteen and a half inches from the end of the board. And then the first one is lined up, and then the second one falls into place. And make sure that these holes are centered on that line. Probably would not be too big a deal if things were off center a tiny bit, but we might as well try to get them centered. So that, you know, this line of holes is in a line and doesn't kind of go like that over the three sections. All right, this is screwed down. Center section. Eventfully, I did exactly what it was supposed to. And the uh, the little chip in the side that I made earlier, it did not go all the way to the bottom, and so it did not change the shape that I ended up cutting. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see, find the first hole. There we go. Okay, let's see if this video is still centered. Yep, looks good. All right, so the next thing to do is, I can improve this a little bit. Next thing to do is improve the video a little bit. All right, I'll flip it over and do the other side with the other uh, template. funny. On this one I have the screws on the opposite corners. It doesn't matter because I do actually have four peanuts in the bottom thing. No, I now realize I only needed two. The, uh, the holes at the bottom of you know, the, the bottom of the counter sink 3D printed things. It's not quite big enough for the screws to just slide through. Um, so it's a little bit annoying to have to thread them in there. Now this, this side doesn't have the line, so I'm not as sure where it should be to be centered, but it doesn't matter too much. Oh, I'll, I'll just make this side flush. That's the correct thing. Okay, flush, not hanging over. Okay, that end is flush. That end is... Yeah. 
Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's good enough. I gotta, I gotta remember not to route these two holes. That was the mistake I made the first time I did this. And that's why I had to... One of those 18 inches looks a little funny. Okay, cable out of my face here. Uh, let's take a drink. Time for some raspberry... Raspberry Clarebrun. All right, shallow ones first. is a little bit off center. I think it's more that way than it should be. So if we loosen it, I can't seem to actually move it very much. So that's strange. Oh, the, uh, this device that holds the bushing, it could actually be off center a little bit. So let's see if I can adjust that. Uh, so I think that it is more this way than it should be because there's too much space on this side. So maybe I can move it. Yeah, we can move it up a little bit. Let's see if that makes it better. I guess that I have a screwdriver right there. All right, back to work.
good. This is it's a little bit time consuming, but this template business has at least taken all the measuring. It's a lot of sawdust. Of course it's a lot of sawdust. It's taken all the measuring um, out of the process, you know, make the template once, uh, draw a few grid lines on these boards just to drill the alignment holes is what I call them. And then just do the template. Now, this is interesting. I wonder what happened here. Oh, uh, this hole looks funny because the plywood has, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, it's a little different in that spot. It has some texture. It had a hole, and maybe some of the layers were. Whoops. Layers were. Uh, Variation in layer thickness. Let's say. This over here is my power strip. Falling off. I could just bolt it to that board over there. It's on a grid beam panel already. said I was trying to make this side flush, right? That looks good. That looks good. Onward. It's really just that center hole that I need the, this in the middle for. Everything else could have been done just with top end, bottom end. But the center hole uh, doesn't exist on the ends of these templates. If I had a slightly longer template, then I could do it. Maybe that'd be good. If you want to make a 24 inch one of these things, use a 15 inch template rather than a 12 inch one. So you know, do that middle hole. Oh, such nice sawdust. I want to save that or something. I need to fill things in. Should I get a jar? Should I get a jar and fill it with this nice... No, I shouldn't. Because I have that already. I already have jars of sawdust. Not sure where they are. Alright, bottom. And uh, once we finish this one, this is, this will, then we'll be done with this monitor mounting panel thing. Hi, Wolfie. Did you get enough cat food? Meow. I love you, too. I'm still working on routing and making a video about it, though. I don't know what I'm going to do after do routing and making a video about routing. Well, at some point I'll have to edit the video. I don't think I'm going to do that tonight, though. Or if I do, it's going to be much later tonight. Because what I want to do is I'm going to go for a walk. And then I'm going to play Rail Grade. Rail Grade was on my wish list, and it uh, was released the other day, I guess. Because now I have it. Oh, here we go. Here's the Tina. It's an okay game. You know, it's not... 
quite like uh, lacks some of the detail that's in Factorio. Um, there's no rail signals, for example. Your trains just kind of go on the track until they get to a switch. And you control where they go by saying for each switch which way a particular train should go. Um, but as far as I can tell, there's no way to say for a particular piece of track that, for example, nobody should ever go this way on it. You know, which in Factory you do by putting a signal on that end on the right side. In uh, rail grade, I often have trains going the wrong way, and then I have to go and turn them around. On the other hand, turning around a train, you just click on it and turn it around. It doesn't need to go around a loop. Also, trains can pass right through each other. I'm not sure if they plan to do something about that. <laughs>
to vacuum that out. Um, all right, there's the, uh, the front and the back. Looks good. I'd call that a success. Success? Success. Secession. Secession. Um, yep, so I'll, I'll sand this, I'll trim the corners, I'll probably put some boiled linseed oil and or polyurethane or Danish, Danish oil, of course. All over it, but uh, other than that, it's done. Woohoo!